Welcome back guys. This project is kind of small compared to the other ones and it was really easy to make. So this is going to be a shorter video. You've already read the title of the video. Today we will be making a GUI for Battleship where you can play on two different devices with two different players. So let's get started. So as I said before, this is a really easy project so there's only two parts in it. The first part is using sockets, and the next part is using Pygame. So let's first take a look at the Pygame part of the project. So if you've ever played a single game in your life, allow me to explain what Battleship is. To sum it up briefly, it's basically a random guessing game to sync the other player's ships. Each player gets a certain amount of chips that they place on a 10x10 grid board. Both players are trying to play Kim Jong-un and launch missiles to sink the other player's ships. The first person to sink all of the other person's ships is the winner. We will use Pygame to render the scene as an interactive UI. This is so that even though the game is pretty simple, we can add like special cool features like mouse clicking and images to make it look a lot nicer and to make it a lot faster. So on to the next part. So the next part of the whole game is the use of sockets or TCP clients in our programming. We'll be using sockets as sort of like a server and client based system. So before we explain sockets, we need to know about the internet protocol hierarchy. I'm just going to call it the IPH for short. The IPH is essentially how data is used throughout the internet. The lowest layer in the IPH is the network access layer. This layer is basically where your MAC address is generated and it's the lowest level of network in the IPH. So the next level in the IPH is the IP layer. So this is where your IP is generated from the network and it's basically like any kind of randomly generated number like for example like 55.196 and it's the second layer in the internet protocol hierarchy. The next level is the transmission protocol or TCP layer. This is how data is exchanged from devices and it's how sockets work actually. It's also where like server side clients and plug plugins are able to be used. So the next layer in the IPH is called the domain name system. And so basically what it does, it decrypts the domain from a website and into an IP. So for example, if I was to search up google.com, it would just load up Google. But Google obviously has something called an IP as described earlier. So basically what DNS will do is decrypt google.com as its own IP and that's how domains work for websites. That's why you have to purchase one too. The final layer is the Hypertext Transport Protocol, which stands for HTTP. So HTTP is essentially where all website code is ran to display application data. This is how websites work and how they look nice. Now that we got that out of the way, what are sockets? Sockets are basically ways to exchange data with, for example, another socket. It's an endpoint in a communication system with at least two devices. It uses the TCP client system, as mentioned before, to exchange data between sockets and the IP system to host that server or client so that we can access the data over the internet. With that out of the way and sockets explained, I would like to show a complete demonstration of the Battleship game in full. So the first thing we see is just two title screens with Battleship on it and with two buttons like join party and create party. So obviously the other person is supposed to create join party and the other person is to, supposed to click create party. 
So the next thing you actually have to do is type in your username and in this fun little UI. And once you do that, um, it gets you into this nice UI that shows a tool versus pending, basically. Pending is basically like the, the other opponent's username and that's it. So there's also a party code on the screen and the person is supposed to type the party code in and once he does, he can um, join the party and the create party person can click on begin battle. So after the party leader starts the game, you're able to place your ships down. So you can place them anywhere on the 10x10 grid and you can even press L to rotate. Once each player has finished placing all their ships down, they have a ready button to click on. Once the party leader has clicked on the ready button, you can now begin the actual battleship game. When the game starts, the client board officially starts the game. It says your turn first and you can click on anywhere you want on the screen. You can see on the left is a placement of your own boats and the right is your missile board. You have to sink the other player's ships to win.